Welcome back to Simply Green Radio here on News Radio 1180 WHAM. Simply Green Radio brought to you by Simply Green Energy and Mr. Rooter Plumbing, a website that you can visit, mysimplygreenenergy.com, mysimplygreenenergy.com, and a phone number that you can dial tonight to join our conversation, 222-1180, 222-1180. Mark Matthews, our guest tonight, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Wind Tamer, and uh, a lot to still get to, uh, Mo, so I'll let you... Uh, Might as well jump right going. in. Yeah. Mark, talk to me about Bet's Limit, because I know that when I first got involved with hearing about, uh, you know, the uh, wind tamer, um, a lot of hoopla about this Bet's Limit and whether or not it's broke Bet's Limit. Um, Try to enlighten our listeners a little bit as to exactly what is Bet's Limit, and is this truly something that uh, we have conquered? Yeah, so so a Betts limit. There's a, a a scientist named Albert Betts who was very turn of the century was very very heavily involved with wind energy. And what he did was he proved that you can't go above 59.7 percent of the wind's energy or the energy available in the wind. That's all you can get out of an open rotored system. Um, so what we got involved with what what we talk about energy and efficiency. We're talking about the getting the 60 percent of the available wind energy out of our of our turbine and so in theory when you look at it that way we have we have in fact exceeded what best limits capabilities were uh for us you know this becomes a really controversial topic within the wind community and understandably so there's a lot of passion around you know designing blades and those type of things for the sure. very very large units but ultimately what we're doing is we're increasing the wind speed at the rotor so by putting this duct around it we actually go when we're doing wind tunnel tests we would be at 30 miles an hour at the tunnel, and we'd be at 43 miles an hour or 44 miles an hour in the duct itself. And then, you know, that would obviously create more RPM, create a lot more efficiency. So we would see we're getting very, very high, what we call wind energy efficiencies out of the unit. So, so when we, you know, we went out and Dr. Visser uh, was very heavily engaged with us during, during the start of our development and still is, and the folks down at Penn State, they talk about what's really important to an end customer or end consumer is if I have a wind speed at my site that is f- average of 15 miles an hour, what percentage of that am I turning in energy into my electric bill? Right. And that's really what, what we talk about efficiency. So when we say 60% energy f- efficiency, that's taking the wind energy and putting it right on to the grid, and that's what we measure. And that, that really is what's most important to the customer. That is the bottom line Absolutely. when you really look at it. So can I make my electric meter spin backwards with a with wind turbine? Yes, you absolutely you can. All absolutely right, so can. It's, it's, it, I, can, I can combine it <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Uh, with that. And, and what you're saying, let me slow you down a little bit. All right. All right, let All me right. just slow it down a little bit. I remember having a pinwheel when I was a kid. Okay. I'd blow through it, and this thing would spin around. So I'm blowing into this this set of rotors, and it's spinning this little thing, right? What you're saying is that what Wind Tamer has, it has a series of ducts that go around those that pinwheel, mm-hmm. gets around to the back side of it, and it literally pulls on that propeller or rotor from the back side. It, it lessens the resistance on the back side. So that that pinwheel actually spins a lot faster than I'm blowing into it. That's correct. Does that make sense? That's that's a that's a very good way to describe okay. it. Okay. So what we're you know what we're trying to do is is create a low pressure area right behind the blades, and when you do right. that, it's it's almost like we use a, a terminology like a siphon. You know, when we talk about right. siphoning water. Right. You're right. creating pressure differential, which forces wind to to, to, to generate. Velocity. Mark, I, I can remember. And it's I, Professor Pete over there, by the way. <laughs> that's right, <laughs> Professor Pete. Yeah. Yes, for Professor Pete and Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. You know, speaking of these pinwheels, you got me thinking, Pete. When I was yeah. a kid, mm-hmm. I could remember my brother coming to me and saying, "Hey, Mo, I bet you I can blow this candle out by blowing through this card." And I'm saying, him, "No way." And sure enough, just like he said, uh, like Mark said, you're creating that low, you know, low uh, mm-hmm. pressure behind it. Mm-hmm. When you blew across the card, it actually blow it blew the candle out. And it, and I, you know, I always thought, I always remembered that. And now it's all coming back together. Pinwheels, right. you know, wind turbines. I well, mean, this is all good stuff. <laughs> you know, Mark, Mark mentioned uh, Dr. Visser. Now, Dr. Visser, uh, I, I happened to read his report on Wind Tamer, and I'm not here to push Wind Tamer. Okay. There's more factoids. But, well, do- Dr. Visser is a very credible man in this yes, he industry. Uh, he's with the Department uh, of Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering over at Clarkston University. So when Dr. Visser says something, everyone typically listens. And uh, here's a couple of things that he observed. If if I just got a couple of bullets, he f- he thinks it's a good design. 
It's functionally attractive. He doesn't mean it's pretty. Right. He means that from a functional perspective, it's a good design. He also says that it reduces the noise typically generated by the smaller turbines. He also says that uh, there's an efficiency that's been indicated that's approximately twice of what a similarly sized turbine would give you. So he's saying to you, I've got these, these rotors, it's five feet across, and I've got a, a, a standard uh, three uh, rotor system, and you compare that to the same size in, in a wind tamer, you're going to get twice the energy that's, that's over what, a given year. Yeah, that's what Dr. Vesser has said. Right, because yeah. at the same wind speeds, the wind tamer spins faster, which makes your generator spin I, faster. I, I, which Mark, makes I your... think he's plugging for a job with wind tamer. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, it sounded pretty good to me there. <laughs> but no, Pete, no, all jokes aside, yeah. you're absolutely right. Yeah. You know, And yeah. I do know this much. I know that every time we ever drive by one, you know, my wife looks at it and it's goes, that is really a pretty wind turbine. Right. You know, she really thinks it's pleasantly, pleasantly you know, it's pleasant to the eye. Well, it doesn't and, look like um, a propeller up in right, the air. And right. You can understand it why does. birds it looks can't like, see it. It looks like a tulip. I, I, I agree. That's, I what, I wanted to, that's pretty. what I wanted to ask Mark. For people who are tuning in tonight, and, you know, they, I mean, there's a lot of, there's been controversy, I guess, over, over these large, tall mm-hmm. wind turbines. Mm-hmm. For instance, there's one I can think of out on 104. There's one down, I believe, in the southern tier, like the Cohocton area. Uh, these are just things coming to mind. But, but what we're talking about here is something totally different. That's right. That's okay. right. You know, really, really, what we're what we're focused on is at the consumer level. Right. So we're not talking about large, massive ones. We're talking about commercial customers, residential customers. A lot, a lot of times, we'll recommend combining wind and solar. We think they're very complementary systems mm-hmm. to put them in at the same spot, and then you can really go a long way to to not having an energy bill anymore. Um, so that's that's what we're talking. These things are are really sized such that they'll take an average home off the grid. That's really what our goal is. And it depends on your wind, your resource. So as we talked off the air, what we do at Wind Tamer is we'll go and, and do an aside evaluation for someone and say, here's what your solar radiation looks like, here's what your average wind speed looks like, and then make the recommendation to say, here's the best return on your dollar. Um, and it, you know, sometimes it's solar, sometimes it wind. it's wind, and it's something we just want to make sure that we educate people that so they know what is the best at their particular location because everyone thinks they have great wind. They remember the windy days, but you know, and the reality is, some days, some places are better than others. Mo's and, got Mo's got great wind, you know. Mo's. I work with him. <laughs> <laughs> we could just put it in front of his mouth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did I hear you say at one point um, uh, on air or off air too that there's. Um, a possibility of combining both solar and wind power? Absolutely. Is that becoming more popular? Yes, yes. I mean, a lot, a lot of what we've done, um, particularly on the commercial customers, is we want to you know, capture the energy. So what we'll do is we'll offer solar and wind and then put a, a battery system, and that's where really the battery side comes in for us to store that energy. And what people have variable bills, commercial customers, a lot, they pay different rates times mm-hmm. of the day. We'll combine the wind and solar into a battery and release it when it's valuable to them. So, you know, from our standpoint, uh, if you're going to put wind in or solar in, you should look at both because you're going in, you're doing one electrical setup, you're doing one visit to the site, and you know if you know if the the energy production is right, you can really take advantage of the incentives right now and get a very good return on investment. Now, does that differ between residential and commercial, incentive wise? And yes, yeah, and that's that's something that we've unfortunately we've become experts at. There's it's not you know there's a lot of places to find that information. What you really should rely on is who's ever Ask doing Pete. the job. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Pete. <laughs> or just go to our website, right? Yeah. Yeah. MySimplyGreenEnergy.com. And you can sort wow. through it. Yep. All right. 222-1180 is the number to call if you want to join in on the conversation. Again, that number, 222-1180. We are in studio tonight with Mark Matthews. He is the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Wind Tamer. We are also in studio with Maurice Aubrey, Mo, the Project Manager at Simply Green Energy. Pete Maurice, true story. Pete, the Project Manager for Renewable Energy at Mr. Ruder Plumbing. He specializes in their water conservation and its green division, and also Brenna Hartman, a fixie chick and founder of HealthyHomesOfRochester.com. We do need to cut away for a quick break. A reminder that the Yankees and Red Sox, the Sunday night game of the week, coming up next here on WHAM. We do need to cut away for a quick break, but we'll be back with one final segment of Simply Green Radio here on News Radio 1180 WHAM.